and hello or welcome back here we are in a uh mine colonies schematic tutorial world you can download this for free um through planet minecraft and there'll be a link below but this is going to be a quick rundown on what you're going to find in this world and uh we are going to walk through and do a short hopefully concise and quick explanation of each and every block as you can see there are quite a few of them i believe there are 54 52 huts in total for mine colonies and you have to make as you can see here by the command blocks uh five of each one excluding the tavern which is over here and the tavern is only three levels so anyways let's hop to it the uh town hall is all the way over here to the left uh, you can start with the town hall or you can not start with the town hall for whatever style you want to build, but it has no requirements um, in and of itself. So our general guidelines, and these are all guidelines. If I say rule at some point, just think guideline. Uh, for level one, we prefer that you build out of wood. For level two, we bring stone. Level three uh, should require something from the nether. Level four should require something from the ocean monument or oceans in general and level five a uh, player should have been to the end and that will conclude both the game and their ability to max level their buildings in mine colonies so moving on we have the builder next and the builder again does not have any requirements on their own and there's little short messages here we'll give you a second to read that if you want or pause it and uh, the only thing that's here is you want to make sure you give your builder enough storage to be able to build what you want them to build. Because if you're building a schematic, and these pads, by the way, are 32 by 32 blocks. That is the recommended maximum size for your buildings because unlike this flat world, somebody has to be able to place your building in the world in naturally generated terrain. So if you think about it, if you have a 32 by 32 block a uh, building that's, you know, 30, 40 blocks tall, that's a lot of blocks. That is a tremendous volume, and your builder needs to store that volume in blocks to be able to build your building. All right, moving on to the residence. The residence requires one bed per level, does not have to be a white bed. Uh, you just need to give them a bed, and they will recognize any color bed, and I believe they will even recognize most uh modded beds as long as the modded bed is coated the same as a vanilla bed right and uh that's all the residents needs let's move on to the next one here and here we have the mine now the mine is a little bit different so the way we do the mine is i need to grab a tag tool and if you haven't seen the tag tool this is it so we will run up we will sneak click on this anchor block now this tag anchor block you will not use in any of your hut blocks okay this is something else entirely but you can see here um that i have actually tagged this incorrectly so we will fix that right quick so to open the tag menu you just right click with the tag tool so we need a cobble block let's close the gluey the gluey the gooey and click on that block right there and we need a ladder block close that pop that right there and that is all you need because that is going to tell the miner let me bring that back up the miner is going to say okay so everything below here is the mine everything above here is the mine hut if you don't tag those blocks correctly uh you're going to have a problem it's just going to be a mess and you're going to be very unhappy moving on to the lumberjack we have the lumberjack here the lumberjack does not require anything uh as you can see there are no requirements so moving on to the next hut we have the warehouse, and the warehouse, again, does not require anything either, but it should have racks for storage. You cannot use barrels, you cannot use chests. They must be racks, and uh, as of the last few versions of Mine Colonies, that is, I believe, 1.18 and 1.19, there was a shift because we had very large warehouses with a lot of racks, and now we've just, it's been shifted a little bit because... It's actually more efficient to have smaller warehouses with fewer racks. I guess the large warehouses with large racks caused a bit of lag. Uh, the next up is the courier. We have the courier hut block here. Um, no requirements. 
So moving on to the next one, we have the, uh, this should be the restaurant. This is the restaurant or cook. As you can see, they require one furnace per level. That's pretty self-explanatory. Level one, one furnace, level two, two furnaces, three, four, all the way up to five furnaces. We have the baker. The baker has the same requirements. So you will need a one, a two, three, four, five furnaces. And next we have the farmer. The farm uh, does not have any requirements in itself. There is an ancillary block, which is called the field, which is otherwise a scarecrow. And this will actually specify an area around it, which you can see in the... Uh, there's a GUI that'll pop up when you right click on that. It does not want to work for me, I think probably because of this prior message about needing a town hall. But uh, it will have a space that you can specify that as a field five blocks around it. And that is uh, how your farmer will actually get to work. The next we have a fisherman. Now the fisherman has a tagging requirement. You can see here that it needs to be three blocks from the water. I'm not sure if this is entirely true anymore. I believe it is still mostly true. Uh, to be on the safe side, you should keep your hut block three blocks from water. And we have water here, hut block would go right here on the third block. Now you can also tag that, I believe the tag is fish, if not I'll correct that and you would actually tag uh, the spots where they could fish from. So this, your fisherman would stand here and cast into the water. Obviously the water has to be bigger than that. But moving on to the next block. We have the chicken herder. Now, none of the herders have any requirements. Um, they just need to have a pen that is large enough for them. You can see uh, that is the, what do we have here? That's the swine herder. This would be the shepherd and the cowboy. Moving on from the herders, we have the composter. Now the composter requires one of these special barrels right here, a compost barrel. And you just need one compost barrel per level, just like furnaces or anything else. You have one, two, three, four, five. Now the guard tower, uh, that is no longer true. So we'll break that and I will update this world. Now this is the same world that I put on Milan at Minecraft, but anymore, uh, you only need one bed for the guard tower. Uh, it used to be that you had to have five. Didn't really make any sense because there was only ever one guard you could assign to the guard tower. And there we go. All right, that is fixed. Um, now the barracks towers, these require one block per level. And you want to make sure that you use this. This is the barracks tower block, not to be confused with the, not barracks, but if I could spell it, the guard tower block, which is um, identical. Guard tower block, barracks tower block. Uh, just make sure you use the correct block. You will need one bed per level. You can see there's two, three, all the way up to five. Now the barracks towers fit into the barracks and the barracks requires one barracks tower per level. Um, there isn't actually a hard coded maximum on the number of towers you could provide in a barracks and the barracks is a little complicated. It has parent schematics, which would be the barracks and a child schematic, which would be the barracks tower. And there are two ways to make the barracks work. And that is not in this video. So you will have to check out a different video in which I will describe to you how to make those work. Uh, but moving on, we have the combat academy. The combat academy should have a pumpkin block here that is missing. I need a carved pumpkin to go right there. So you need one of these dummies, and this is a dummy. A carved pumpkin on a hay block is a dummy. Now you can spruce this up if you want, but you need one of those and one bed per level because your uh, squires that are here fighting and learning in the combat academy will live at the combat academy. It's kind of like a military school, and the archery range works the same way. You want a uh, target block and a bed, one of each per level, just like everything else. So at level two, you can see right back there, we've got two beds, two, ta two target blocks and moving on. Um, now we have the uh, library. Doesn't have any requirements except for the fact that you have to have bookshelves in there because the 
librarians will actually work at the bookshelves. And uh, they just kind of train, their self, train themselves and get smarter. You can read here, you just need bookshelves. You How you design that, how many bookshelves you put in there is entirely up to you. We have the sawmill. The sawmill has no requirements in and of itself, so moving on. Neither does the stonemason. Neither does the... Oh, no, oh, 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 almost misspoke. The uh, stone smelter has a requirement of one furnace per level. So just like the cook, just like the baker, one furnace per level is what you need. Crusher, no requirements. Sifter, no requirements. The stones, uh, not the stone smelter, but the smelter needs one furnace per level, as you can see here. Moving on, I've explained that enough times. Uh, blacksmith has no requirements. The uh, florist, florist, flower shop. I always tend to try and make it into a flower shop. That's why. So you need four of these composted dirt blocks. Now these are uh, mine colony specific blocks. You need four per level, which means at level two, you will actually have eight total compost blocks. At level three, you will have 12. 16 and 20 total compost blocks at level 5. That's 5 times 4 equals 20. Ah, ah, ah. Does that count as a copyright claim, I wonder? Anyways, the enchanter has no requirements in and of himself. The, uh, this should be the, this is either the university or the school. That's the university. University doesn't have any requirements other than it needs bookshelves, just like the library. And over here we have the hospital. The hospital requires one bed per level. Now, remember that that just means that you have to have one bed per level. You can have more than one bed per level, just like the furnaces. You can have more than one per level, but I don't believe that your workers will actually use them. Moving on, this one is the school. The school requires four carpets per level, and the carpet color doesn't matter. So you need, uh, let's grab something you can see. A one, two, three, four carpets per level. Now let's say you have five levels. So that's a one, a two, a three, a four, a five. You need this minimum space to make your school work. And we actually recommend that you make it a little bit larger just to give the kids space to actually find a seat because, you know, if they plop down here, you can see I'm straddling two carpets. They may occupy that space and then you will have a child that has no carpet to sit on and learn. In which case, they will be in... Oh, never mind. Uh, here we have the glass blower. They require one furnace per level, as you can see. Nothing terribly interesting there. The dyer, on the other hand, this requires one furnace. Not one furnace per level, just one furnace. Because you have to actually cook a cactus to get green dye. That's why. So, they need one furnace. Moving on, we have the tavern. The tavern requires uh, one of each of these barrels. How many of these barrels is up to you, but you only need one of each, and it's not per level. You just have to have one of each, and you need four beds. Again, not per level, so the tavern is unique. It functions as a residence, and it also allows uh, visitors to come and visit your colony. Now, your first four workers that will spawn in, your colonists, that will come into your game when you start a town hall and start a col colony, they will stay at the tavern, and that's where they'll live until they have a house of their own. And moving on, the Fletcher has no requirements. The Mechanic has no requirements. Plantation has requirements. Now this one gets a little bit different, so you can see that it requires four bamboo, four sugar, and four cactus per level. Now, the regular planting rules apply, so if you have sugar, and you try and plant sugar here, you, I can't. I can't even put it here because there's no water next to it, right? I need water in order to grow sugar cane. Now I can put four sugar canes right there. And when you tag this, I'm going to show you real quick. We are going to tag this sugar, and this is what tells the game to work. And you tag the block. Do not tag the sugar, tag the block. If you tag this, it is wrong. What will happen is the, build, uh, the plantation worker will actually plant the crop up here and it will break because it's floating in the air. Tag the block, 
under what you want to grow. And that is true for the bamboo and the cactus. Uh, remember that cactus does not grow next to itself. So that's uh, one thing you'll have to take care of when you are designing your plantation. All right, next we have... Yes, concrete mixers hut. You need three blocks of flowing water. So let's show you what that looks like. We got a one, a two, and a three. One, two, three. And you, and you, and... We have a water source block, and then we have a one, a two, a three blocks of flowing water. And that is what the concrete maker requires. Uh, and he just needs one spot, so that's it. You just, as long as you got that one spot on level one, you just leave it alone. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, this is the rabbit hutch. Now, rabbits are sneaky little dastardly rabbity things, and they jump walls, and they jump fences. So you just have to remember, uh, and we suggest, actually hold on here, because I think baby rabbits go under fences. So if you're going to enclose your rabbits, make sure you have a wall with a fence on top. Or you can do two walls tall, uh, whatever's going to keep the little buggers in. You can enclose them in a room if you want to, I mean they don't really have to do anything in order to breed, so... Uh, yeah, just make sure you, they are enclosed in a space that is two blocks tall or they'll be able to get out. The apiary has no requirements, not even a beehive block. Um, that might sound a little weird, but what the apiary block does is it will give you a wand and then you go and you tag some beehives with that wand and they can be anywhere in your colony and the apiary will go, or, uh, the apiarist... Uh, the dude in the bee suit. He'll go pick it up and he'll go service those beehives and everybody will be happy. Next we have the mystic site. The mystic site has no requirements and honestly I don't know what it does. Moving on. The graveyard. Now the graveyard is pretty fun. Everybody needs a graveyard. Uh, you're gonna place these named graves but when you put them down they'll be unknown citizen and when the builder builds the graveyard in game these graves aren't going to be there. It's just a placeholder for where a grave can be when a colonist dies. Now there aren't any rules or guidelines about how many graves you need, but just remember that uh, Minecraft is a dangerous and a violent place where your colonists will die. And uh, you should have enough of these just to, uh, you know, give everybody a nice resting place until your uh, gravekeeper can resurrect them. Yeah, that's a, that's a thing too. Uh, next we have the nether worker. The nether worker has a curious set of guidelines. So when you make a portal... Now leave this portal unlit. You don't want to light this portal, it's not required. Uh, suggested that you leave it off, so let's go ahead and sneak right click so that we load that up and we will tag this portal. And then you will come over here and you will tag that block and you have successfully tagged the portal for your nether worker. Now the other thing that they need is actually a little hiding spot because they don't actually go into the nether. They teleport into a little hiding spot that we will call a vault. And you will tag that vault and close it off so that when your nether worker goes la 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 I'm going into the nether world wish me goodbye uh, they actually just boop on over into here and they hide and uh well okay anyways you get the idea so make sure you tag a vault uh, at least one block recommended that it's at least two blocks um deep so that they can just kind of stand in there comfortably and the very last one we have the Alchemist Tower. Um, this also requires quite a bit of interesting things. So first off, you need one brewing stand per level. Uh, so by the end of level five, you need five brewing stands. Now you also need soul sand, but you don't need any soul sand on level one. You will start with four soul sand on level two and add two more soul sand per level. So if you see here, we got one, two, three, four, plus two more. If I can place it right, plus two more. 
So we have six, and then we have eight, and then we have ten soul sand at level ten. Now the other thing that the alchemist tower or the alchemist will need is either a tree or they will need some leaves that they can reach in order to pluck mistletoe from. So there's no set amount of leaves that they require. It just requires leaves so that they can uh, do their job. If they don't have any of those things, they'll be unhappy with you. They will ask you to provide the things that they require. All right. One last thing, as you can see here, there is a set of mine templates. Now these templates are for the miner. When he goes to expand the mine, he's gonna build one of these. I don't know what the process is for how he picks which ones he's gonna build, but these are provided so that you can edit them how you like. Um, the size is set, so do not make them any larger or smaller than they are. You can see here, this is the main main shaft. Now this, is going to match that thing over there that I showed you when we were talking about the mine, right? He's going to build this under your miner hut. And then in each one of these entrances, he will connect one of these pieces and you can change this up inside. I uh, generally, to make it cheaper, just like to delete all this stuff and place some torches. Uh, remember that the miner is a dangerous job and you can assign them a guard over at the mine hut uh, to help protect them, but you want to make sure that your mine shafts are lit or your miners will always be dead. And that's pretty much it. We can talk about this over here. Uh, that's pretty much it for schematics. Over here we have what we call the auto scanner. Uh, now this is designed basically to scan your entire style set, that entire thing that you saw, all the way down to here so that you're not constantly running around having to scan two points, you know, I want this point and I want that point and I got to do this and I got to blah, 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 type stuff in. No fun, right? Um, what you can do is we'll do a, a different instructional video just on how to use the scan tool, but you can actually streamline that by inputting that information into a command block. And then when you hit the button, this will work its way down and it will scan every single one of your buildings for you so that when you make updates, you just come back, whack it. You can do that. This is also designed to work singly so that if I only updated the residents here, I can scan that. Over here is a, uh, another auto scanner and this one is just for decorations. If you build a bunch of decorations, you can fill this thing up to your heart's content. If you build no decorations, you can ignore it uh, right here. You can see that this is the auto scanner for those mine shafts right there. And you can see the code for that is in here. You can use this as an example. Uh, in the world download, it will come with a spreadsheet that is called auto scanner. And that's my preference so that I uh, simply type coordinates into the spreadsheet and then I copy and paste it over. But watch what happens if I click on this, you can see I got some outputs here and it successfully scanned my things. So if I click this right here, you can see there is uh, one of the minor shafts, whichever one it is. And that's just the way this works. So uh, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the short video. We will do some more of these as we come across. I'm working on a build series for a new style pack that will be along the same vein as Littleton. Uh, hopefully I'll start releasing those soon and we'll work through it and we'll just kind of explore mine colonies and how you build your own style for it. But thanks for joining me and we will see you all later. You have an awesome time. Bye bye.